Well, it's the time of year when a lot of pilots worry about ice, and as many of you instrument-rated pilots know, icing forecasts are notoriously broad and unreliable. So what if there were a way to narrow those forecasts to the places where you're really going to find real ice? Well, NASA has just started a research that someday may lead to better ice forecasts, but they're starting right now with snow. This three-year research project is flying out of NASA's Wallops Flight Facility on an island off the Virginia coast. Now, Wallops is probably best known for its rocket launches. The Antares launches out of Wallops, and they launch sounding rockets all the time. So I was pretty excited to get permission to land at Wallops. It's usually off-limits to civilians. And I was excited to get an aerial view of the island and the launch facilities. 528 Mike Julia, check well down, wind 070 at 8, runway 10, clear to land. 8 Mike Julia, wheels down and welded and clear to land. Oh, well, I did see the runway. Yeah, 528, welcome to Wallops, right off when able. I'm here with a bunch of other media and social media types to learn about impacts the investigation of microphysics and precipitation for Atlantic Coast Threatening Snowstorms. Well, they work hard for their acronyms at NASA. Thirty years ago we had no idea that there would be any kind of storm or a nor'easter type storm at all. We could not forecast them at all. Now we have a much better handle on that uh, and we are now trying to understand why models sometimes tend to have errors such that they will underdevelop those storms or overdevelop them. We don't understand, uh, model correctly the distribution of snowfall within the storm systems themselves. Now places that get a lot of snow seem to be below narrow regions in the clouds called snow bands. Scientists know snow bands exist but don't understand exactly how they form or how to predict them. IMPACT is going to try to figure that out. And if they can nail snow forecasts, the data may lead to better icing forecasts, too. One of the measurements we would be uh, taking is uh, super cool cloud liquid water. Mm -hmm. So we will find out when that is occurring inside these snowstorms, because we think that actually is a process that's important for the growth of snowflakes inside the snowstorms, which then also affects um, the icing that you're concerned about as a pilot. So they're going to fly two aircraft into the heart of the snow bands, an ER-2 and a P-3 Orion, both loaded with all kinds of sensors. This is a one-of-a-kind here that NASA flies and has been upgraded obviously with the most recent uh, digital architectures. Um, but uh, that, that they've cut a lot of holes into uh, in the name of science. Forecasters on the ground will tell the pilots where to go. We'll be you know all gathered up in this room and uh, discussing the evolving uh, weather situation. So the mission scientists over there are uh, responsible for developing a flight plan including where the uh, ER-2 and the P-3 aircraft should fly, when they should fly and take off. And They want to put the P-3 right in the heart of the snow bands while the high-flying ER-2 will stack above the P-3, measuring the snow clouds from above. And what we're trying to do is take the science desires, run it through the, can the airplane do it? Is it safe to do it? Filter in our brains built up from years worth of experience. Then translate that into pilot talk and pass those numbers and uh, information up to the pilots so that they can respond. Uh, in their responding, they have to run it through ATC, air traffic control, and that doesn't um, that always. <laughs> we're not always successful in getting what we want. <laughs> Mobile ground radars will be looking up into the clouds, and researchers will launch instrument-laden balloons up into the clouds as well, while crew aboard the P-3 will drop radio zones down into them. Definitely will have a big impact on public safety. We'll have a better able, we'll be able to communicate to the public when to, to not be traveling out in adverse conditions and maybe it'll help even with uh, aircraft control uh, planning and such like that. And perhaps better icing forecast for pilots too. November 528, Mike Juliet, runway 10 at Bravo, approximately 6,000 feet available, winds are 0706, clear for takeoff. And I didn't get to see wallops on the departure either, but no ice in those clouds. 8 Mike Juliet, altimeter 3011, contact departure, have a safe flight, sir.